Oh, hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. Don't get too excited. I'm just playing around here in the home studio. Today we're going to be featuring an item that the folks over at the Pocket Shot sent to me. Now, they follow along on the channel. They know that in the past I've been a huge Slingbow fan. They reached out to me and they said, John, we have an item called the Pocket Hammer. We'd like you to test it out, get it out in front of your viewers. Knowing that I like sling bows, I like anything archery, I said, yeah, send it on over. We will give it a whirl and I will introduce it to you folks out there. So without further ado, what we're going to do is do a quick specs rundown. I'll show you the ins and outs of the pocket hammer. And then we're going to take it out on the backyard range where I have a uh, 3D target out there. We're gonna sling some arrows, kind of give you a little sight sound, a little feel for how this works. And then if I can get everything set up right, we will break out the crawny and see what kind of feet per second we're getting with the pocket hammer. Folks, arrows, slingshots, it's uh, Disneyland for big boys today. It's awesome. Come along and join me. The video starts now. I'm now going to convert the pocket hammer to where it'll shoot arrows because I'm an archer. I'm not really a huge slingshot shooter, but I love shooting sling bows. So we're going to test this out with the whisker biscuit and the red latex pocket to shoot arrows. Now the cover of the pocket hammer also has a keyed flange on there so you can disconnect the flange that holds the pocket onto the slingshot. Now on the inside of the pocket, there's a flare on this flange and you just roll it, comes right off. Putting them on at first might be a little tricky, so I gotta stretch it out just a little bit. Get the uh, pocket right on the flange, pull it over, presto, we're good to go. It's threaded. I'm going to put it right back in. I want to make sure that I have a good interference fit because the last thing you want is that pocket coming loose. So I'm going to tighten this down to where it's snug plus just a little and now I'm good to go to put my whisker biscuit on. And now I'm going to get down to the garage, find a few arrows that I feel is going to work the best for this. And then I will install the rubber caps that go on the knocks of the arrows. And that's going to help you, one, protect the pocket, and two, help you draw uh, that pocket back and hold it so you're able to shoot with some accuracy. We're going to start off this... Um, review with the crony test. We can get that out of the way right up front. Now keep in mind that the velocities are going to vary based on your draw length. I happen to have a 27 inch draw length. Today we're using some Victory V-Force HVs. There's seven grains per inch and I have a 125 grain field point on the front. So this is cut at 27 and a half inches, so I'm looking at approximately 317.5 grains. Also put on the uh, arrow knock covers. That helps protect the pocket in here, give it a little more longevity. So let me stand back, get behind the camera. Hopefully I don't hit the crony, and we'll uh, see what sort of string we can get with this.
126.9, not bad. One thirteen. One twenty two point nine. One seventeen point three. Now, with my twenty seven inch draw, like I said. You know, those are conservative numbers. If you have a 28, 29, or 30 inch draw, you can expect probably to get up to 130 feet per second or maybe even a little bit more. That's enough to uh, definitely take small game, rabbits, squirrels, groundhogs with that. All right, I'm at the 10 yard pin here on my home range. Uh, just a little public safety announcement. Always use some form of eye protection whenever you're doing any sort of slingshot activity, the last thing you want is an object or that latex to come snap you in the face and hit your eye. That would not be good for anyone. So with my public safety announcement out of the way, let's see if we can uh, try to group some of these together. Nice dead center. I'm hoping I can repeat that shot. That one hit low, hit the leg. But the arrows are getting good flight. Nice, right in the kill zone. Nice, another heart lung shot. So, not too bad, I had one that hit the leg but with a little bit of practice, I mean, you can get really accurate with this unit. I'm gonna shoot a couple arrows from a side profile to help give you a better understanding about how to shoot arrows through this. Now, I come from a traditional archery background. Uh, unlike compound shooting, where they have a fixed anchor, you, when you draw, it will stop, the cam stops, so it has a fixed point traditional archery, if you keep pulling, 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 your anchor could change all over the place, causing major inconsistencies. What I do and what traditional archers do is they find a spot on their face that they can anchor to, to be more consistent in their shooting. What I do is I anchor to the corner of my mouth and I touch an eye tooth on the top uh, jaw. And what that does is that eye tooth is a fixed object, it's not moving. So I can help get a little more consistent in my shot patterns and my shot cycle by drawing and anchoring to the same place. Now, I can't speak for the um, slingshot community because I know that a lot of folks uh, shoot a lot of different ways. But I'm just showing you what works for me to help give you a better understanding about my style of shooting. So we're gonna shoot four arrows down range. Had to pull the camera back a little bit so we had a background so you guys could see a little bit better without the camera keep going in and out. So right now we're at about, I wanna say 14 yards on the range. I'm gonna draw. And uh, what you wanna do is when you draw and you release, you wanna leave your hand up till that arrow hits the target and the reason for that is is that if I shoot and then I automatically drop my hand you're now adding variables in your shot cycle you're gonna be all over the place you're gonna shoot high you're gonna shoot low left right all over the place can just cause a lot of problems so follow through leave your hand up there till the arrow hits the target It actually is pretty smooth. It's smoother than some of the bows that I actually own. Nice. 
the hardest part for me is I can't see the tip of the arrow because my arrows are so short. But if you had a full length arrow cut to 30 or 31 inches where you could see the tip, it would be a little bit better to index because I'm a gap shooter in traditional archery. But I'm using the top of the slingshot in order to gauge where my arrow is going to go. And I hope that gives you a little bit better understanding about how I go through my shot cycle. Now for some final thoughts on the pocket hammer from Pocket Shot. First off, I'm really impressed with the velocity that it was shooting these arrows in the crony test. Now, I shoot a lot of bows and my, I wish I had a scale to know how much the poundage was at 27 inches when I got to anchor. But after shooting a lot of bows, it's got to be close to 30 pound ish. I was impressed that it shot in the 120s, the low 120s. And like I said in the crony test that if you have a longer draw, then obviously you're going to get a little bit more velocity um, out of that arrow. Now, it all depends as well on the weight of the arrow. So your mileage is going to vary on that. If you're shooting aluminum, if you're shooting carbon, if you're shooting wood, how you're holding it, your anchor, all that's going to play into it. But for the most part, for how I shoot traditional archery, it worked out very well. Now, the handle on this was very ergonomic. Uh, I had no hand fatigue, no hand shock at all. I was surprised because I thought from constantly drawing this and just all that forward motion that there was gonna be a ton of hand shock. There was absolutely none. It felt really good. The hardest part for me shooting arrows through this is that I'm a traditional bow hunter. So when I sight, I'm bringing that arrow right to the corner of my mouth and I'm indexing off that arrow tip. So I'm doing what's known as split vision when I'm shooting. And at 27 and a half inches long, the shaft of this arrow, I could not see the tip of the arrow. And I mentioned that earlier. Uh, folks that have um, 30 inch or 31 inch arrows, you should be able to see the arrow tip, which would make it a lot easier to be consistent. But with a little bit of practice, if you look on here, there's these cutouts and I was using that to index in order to get basically my Kentucky windage um, to aim with that. Now the whisker biscuit setup worked really fine. I like the fact that it's just a quick screws on screws off. I like the fact that you can change out these uh, pockets to the black and the blue ones. And we'll talk about that real quick. The black and the blue are for uh, the ball bearings and the clay shot. Now the black ones, I'll show you a photo here. They're the standard model and they'll shoot uh, the projectiles up to 300 feet per second. And they're claiming that's a 24 pound pull. Now, I don't know if they're using steel or clay shot on that. I have to get uh, a hold of the manufacturer to find out on that if folks are interested, but um, that's not bad. Now the blue is their competitive pocket and they're claiming that they get 350 feet per second with that shooting either the clay shot or the ball bearings. Uh, that That's just insane. I was impressed that we got 120 something feet per second with an arrow out of this. It's just, it's a fun, um, uh, tool to have. Now the handle on this surprisingly is very ergonomic. It just put it back on here real quick. It just felt good in the hand. Had no hand fatigue and I was very surprised that I had zero hand shock at all. I thought with something like this that I might get a lot of hand shock vibration coming down into the handle. There was absolutely none um, this unit just all the energy is just going with that projectile right out the front, which is where you want it. It disconnects. If you look up here, they have a piece of spring steel. 
you slide that out, you can take that pocket shot out. Now you're mobile, you can put that in your backpack, you can carry it around in your cargo pants, not a problem. I like the fact that the whisker biscuit comes off, you can swap this out really quick, put the other cap on, now you can keep shot in there. If you're out in the woods and you're messing around, you got uh, ammo and you're ready to go. So, with everything here that we've seen, you folks want to get a rating on this. I'm thinking the Ergos, the Crony, how it's shot. I rate everything between one and five stars. You guys know that. One star is a dumper, it's going to the boneyard. Five stars is a grand slam. We hit it out of the park. I think they did a good job. I'm gonna give it five stars on the channel. It does everything that their specs say that it can do. And just a fun factor, I mean, you could keep this in the car, you can put it in a backpack, you can take it camping. If you got a yard where you can shoot, you can take the kids out there, cans, little plastic bottles, have fun all day long with this. Uh, this is definitely a win, five stars. What I'll do is I'll leave a link in the video description below if you wanna learn more about this system. And uh, with that, hey, it's a wrap. I had fun doing this video, folks. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Now I'm gonna go out and see if I can't uh, shoot a few more arrows at that target.